Here's the second problem in the world of optimization. A rectangular pen is built with one side against a barn. 200 meters of fencing are used for the other three sides of the pen. What dimensions maximize the area of the pen? So what I probably would do is draw a picture first to get an idea of what I'm dealing with. So it says one side is against a barn and then there's three other sides of the pen. So maybe something like this. This part right here will be the barn. And then I'll have fencing something like this. So this will be my fencing around the outside like this. So 200 meters of fencing are used for the other three sides of the pen. So the total of these three sides adds up to 200 meters. And what dimensions maximize the area of the pen? So they want base and they want the height. Those are the things that they're going to be using. So I will set, um, let's do this, Y. Y, these are both Y, and then I'll let X be this. So it matches somewhat with our normal graphing styles. What dimensions maximize the area of the pen? So let's start, well, let's actually, the area of the pen is what? The objective function. That's the area equals base times height. The area of a rectangle is base times height. And what is our constraint? Constraint is the things that X and Y must live according to in this problem. 200 meters of fencing are used. So the, this side here plus this side plus this side must add up to 200 meters. So it looks like 2Y plus X equals 200. Now to do anything with this function I need to get it to one variable. So I need to either solve for x or y in here. I think it's easier to solve for x here. So when I rewrite my objective function, the a equals x times y, I think what I'll do is actually I'll solve for x here and get 200 minus 2y times y and I'll call that now a of y. So y is my variable. It, this doesn't mean anything. I mean, the, if you graph this thing, your y values are area values. But nonetheless, let me go ahead and do one more thing to it. Just multiply through the y. This makes it quite a bit like the previous problem. Now, you should also, in the constraint, in the world of constraints, we should list what y is allowed to be equal to here. So I want you to think about this. Y could be as little as zero. If Y is zero, then you just have this fencing along the barn that is 200 meters long. But it, theoretically, Y could be zero. So let me throw this in here. Zero is less than or equal to Y. But then on the other hand, Y cannot be bigger than 100. Because if Y is 100, then y plus y is 200, that would leave x being 0. So the most y can possibly be is, two, is 100. So if you will, I'm going to put an s on constraints because this is one of them. Having a closed and bounded interval is always the best thing to have because then all I have to do is try the endpoints versus uh, any critical numbers that I find when I take the derivative. So let's take the derivative of this. I know it's got a y. I mean, you can call this thing anything you want. But y is my variable, so I'm going to take the derivative with respect to y, and I'll get 200 minus 4y, and I'll set that equal to 0. That way, y equals 50. Now let's go ahead and check a of 0 
equals 0, a of 100 equals 0, a of 50 equals, so if I replace y with 50, I'll get 100 times 50, which would be 5,000. You should know that that means meters squared. So clearly, uh, when y is 50, this thing has its maximum possible value. Well, then what is x? x was 200 minus 2y. That will be 100. So to answer the question, let us it's not a bad idea to go back to the problem itself. It says, what dimensions maximize the area? That means I want the value of x and I want the value of y. You usually list your dimensions in terms of base times height or length times width. Whatever you want to call these things doesn't matter to me. So the x that I found was 100 meters and the y was 50 meters. So the answer to the question is 100 meters by 50 meters. And once again, you could have gotten away without using calculus. By graphing this thing and changing the y to an x so that you can plug it into your calculator, you would have seen that you would have had a downward pointing parabola with a zero at the origin and one at 100. And you know that the vertex would have to have occurred at 50, whatever it was. I think that value was 5,000. But they didn't ask actually the value that was the maximum. They asked you for, oh, well, does that look bad? <laughs> I'll see if I can make that look better. I don't think I can. <laughs> Can't quite get it. But anyways, the, the halfway point is 50 on downward pointing parabolas. So that so you would have found that 50 would have been what the y dimension, the, the height of it, if you will, and 100 would have been the x dimension. 2 times 50 is 100. 